Jean was a French heroine. She led the French to victory over the British, ending a bloody conflict and a brutal chapter in the history of Europe. However, the story of her courage and valor did not end with her capture. Her trial, her death and what happened after are the topics of many books, films and discussions. Jean's death and what happened after is a story of betrayal mystery, intrigue and inspiring defiance that deserves a separate chapter in the history of France. From an early age, Jean became a devout adherent of her Christian faith and claimed to have had visions from the Archangel Michael, Saint Margaret, and Saint Catherine. For almost a century, France was torn apart by war, as the English House of Plantagenet sought to oust the French House of Valois for the right to own the French throne. Jean claimed that her visions told her that she should liberate France from the English occupation and ensure the coronation of the Dauphin heir to the French throne Charles VII. After initial attempts to be known as the messenger of God, Jean eventually received an audience with the Dauphin. He sent her to Orleans, a French city besieged by British troops. Jean's presence raised the spirits of the French, and her insistence that they follow her strategic advice led to a complete victory for the French. She continued to accompany troops to victory during the Loire campaign, encouraging them to fight again, inspiring them to engage a numerically superior British army in a stalemate that led to a decisive French victory. All but one of the British commanders were captured, and the British offensive was thwarted. Her actions led to the fact that the French were able to make their way to Reims for the coronation of Charles VII. After the coronation, Jean announced that her mission as God's messenger was completed, while she continued to fight and inspire the French troops. The subsequent campaign brought mixed results, and in the end Joan was captured by Anglo-Burgundian troops, sold to the British, and put on trial. She was accused of heresy and of wearing men's clothing. The latter was a serious crime in the Middle Ages. Before the trial, Jean was kept in the Borivore Tower, from where she tried to escape by jumping out of the window. Her attempt failed, and she was injured. The reason for the flight, she said, was a new vision that all residents of Compiègne should be put to the sword. She stated, and I would rather die than continue to live after such a destruction of good people. The trial of Jean was lengthy by medieval standards and complicated, but it was also manipulated by the British, to whose care the Maid of Orleans was transferred. She was put on trial under the leadership of a pro-English faction in France. 115 witnesses were called to testify, but many recordings of their testimony were conveniently excluded from the protocols. The interrogation began in February 1431. Jean behaved with dignity and maintained her composure throughout the trial. The prosecution, for example, tried to trap her by asking if she knew if she was in God's mercy. Church doctrine stated that no one could know if they were in God's grace. The answer yes would contradict the generally accepted doctrine, and the answer no could be used against it as an admission of sin. Jean replied, If I am not in God's mercy, then may the Almighty put me there, and if I am in His mercy, may God preserve me. On the 10th of March, sessions began to take place in her prison cell. The evidence of the accusation of heresy presented by the prosecution turned out to be a constantly weak line of questioning, and the questions at the trial began to shift more towards the fact that Jean was dressed in men's clothes. Nevertheless, the British subsidized the trial, and the guilty verdict was a foregone conclusion. Jean was convicted of heresy, and on the 24th of May was taken to the churchyard of the Abbey of St. Wynne for public condemnation. However, after that, Jean repented. As a repentant heretic, she could not be executed until she renounced her abdication. The condition of the abdication was that Jean had to agree to give up wearing men's clothing. They gave her a dress and shaved her head, but she was never released, but was returned to a prison cell, where she was mistreated. Her British captors tried to rape her and she was denied mass. After that, Jean cancelled her abdication and stated that it was a mistake. She was convicted of being a recidivist heretic, and on the 30th of May she was taken to the Old Market Square in Rouen, and placed under British control. Despite being accused of heresy, she received communion, and accepted a crucifix for a procession from a nearby church before her hands were tied. She was tied to a plaster column and burned alive. As the flames engulfed her, 
She cried out her last words in the form of a prayer, Jesus, Jesus. Jean's death was a great tragedy, especially since at that time she was only 19 years old. After Jean's death, the cardinal ordered her body to be burned a second and third time until only ashes remained. What was left of the Maid of Orleans was thrown into the Seine. In 1867, the ashes, presumably belonging to Jean, were found in the attic of a pharmacy in Paris and were transferred to the museum in Chinon. But since then it has been established that it is a fake. Jean's death led to the discovery of various other relics, including bones and pieces of cloth. It was claimed that these were genuine items belonging to the Maid of Orleans. However, none of them has been proven to be genuine. Nevertheless, religious relics are widespread in the Catholic faith and under the tutelage of religious authorities they are treated with reverence, at the request of her mother and to brothers, as well as with the permission of Pope Calixtus III. The trial of Joan was investigated in the 1450s by the Inquisitor General Jean Briel. Until 1450, a retrial was impossible, since the necessary documents were kept in Rouen, which was liberated from the English. Only in 1449, and February 1450, Charles VII ordered the priest de Lambouillet to open an investigation into the abuses at the original trial. The investigation was conducted at the University of Paris, where many high-ranking officials testified against Jean. Many of these scientists also swore allegiance to England. As such, the investigation did not lead to anything significant. Charles, who was still busy fighting the British, decided to wait. Two years later, another attempt was made to reopen the case, this time under the auspices of Cardinal Guillaume de Stutville, the papal legate appointed by the Pope. Although he sympathized with Jean's redemption, he had ulterior motives. His main goal in France was to conclude the Anglo-French peace, but the continued success of the French armies in Normandy made this mission unsuccessful. However, de Stoutville lost lands in Normandy during the English invasion, and the legate's family were loyal supporters of Charles VII. Guillaume's goal was to ingratiate himself with the French king and clear the monarch's name of any ties with a heretic. Charles VII did not like the idea of the Inquisition holding a trial in France outside of royal control. Nevertheless, the trial continued under the command of Inquisitor Brill, despite the fact that the investigation has dried up and is no closer to reaching a verdict. Vital information has been collected that will be used in the third and final attempt to exonerate Jean. And 1455, the family of the Maid of Orleans again demanded compensation for the damage done to the honor of Joan. This time the attempt received a huge response. Pope Calixtus III appointed three representatives of the higher clergy to consult with Inquisitor Brill, and a retrial took place. 115 witnesses were called back to testify. Among them were villagers from her childhood, residents of Orleans whom she met during the siege, soldiers with whom she fought, and many others. The final verdict was delivered, and Inquisitor Brihal suggested that those who led the original trial could themselves be guilty of heresy. On July 7, 1456, Joan was declared innocent of the charges against her, and the trial that led to her death was cancelled. She was subsequently declared a martyr. The martyrdom of Jean inspired a lot of courage in the French, and she quickly became a symbol of national pride which has survived to this day. Her death was the result of the British political need to justify their position. She was a very valuable symbol of disobedience that needed to be eradicated. Her life ended with betrayal, torture both physical and mental and the most painful death. It was a huge miscarriage of justice that was corrected 25 years later. Joan was not only acquitted, but also beatified and canonized in the 20th century. During the Second World War, the Nazis melted down a large number of French statues, but the statues of Jean were spared. Her story is not over yet. The Maid of Orleans is a symbol for many, and her image is used by movements both in France and around the world from all sides and extremes of the political spectrum.